Let us try an example to design a retaining wall. A retaining wall is required at the site boundary due to the difference in terms of the elevations. You are asked to propose the arrangement of a retaining wall. Sketch the free body diagram of all the forces acting on the retaining wall. Identify the possible modes of failure of retaining wall. Outline the equations to evaluate the stability of the retaining wall by incorporating the relevant factor of safety. Identify the favorable conditions or unfavorable conditions of the forces. And lastly, sketch the arrangement of reinforcement bar and weight hole. The proposed platform level for your construction site is 9 meters above sea level and the adjacent load is 13.8 meter height. This question is meant to test your understanding in terms of the retaining wall. You do not need to go through the series of calculation steps to determine the amount of reinforcement bar. You may pause the video for a while for you to work out the solution. As the solutions, first you need to propose the arrangement of the retaining wall. Identify the lot boundary. Identify the differences in terms of the platform level. And the adjacent load is the regions where the construction is not allowed. With that, you are unable to utilize the soil here as the backfill acting on the retaining wall. Therefore, the arrangement of retaining wall should be something like this. Next, you sketch the free body diagram to identify the forces acting on the retaining wall. There will be surcharge acting on the elevated soil. There will be self-weight of the wall, self-weight of the base, frictional force due to the vertical load acting on the retaining wall, bearing stress as a reaction to the vertical force acting on the wall. There will be active pressure due to the surcharge which is going to be uniform throughout the depth and there is going to be active pressure due to the soil which increase with the depth. Next, you are asked to identify the potential mode of failure of the retaining wall. The retaining wall can fail by overturning, sliding, settlement and also middle third. These are the typical stability criteria that you need to check for a retaining wall. Then you are asked to outline the equations to evaluate the stability of the retaining wall by incorporating the factors of safety. For overturning, the resisting moment needs to be greater than the overturning moment so that these equations it will be greater than zero. The factor of safety for GK and QK for the favorable conditions is 0 0.9 and 0 while the factor of safety for unfavorable forces is 1.5 and 1.1 for QK and GK respectively. As for the sliding check, the frictional force is to be checked against the sliding force. The frictional force needs to be greater than the sliding force so that it is more than zero. And the factor of safety for favorable conditions is 1.0 and 0. And for unfavorable forces is 1.35 and 1.5. As for the checking for the settlement, the bearing resistance is to be checked with the bearing stress. The bearing resistance is given by the soil. 
the bearing stress is due to the rotational movement of the retaining wall. Therefore, the resistance needs to be greater than the stress. In this case, the factor of safety is considered as 1.0. Lastly, you check for the middle third. You can use equations for the eccentricity or you can find the positions of the vertical load. Either equation is applicable. The factor of safety here is equal to 1.0. Next, you are asked to identify the favorable forces and non-favorable forces. The same set of forces may be favorable for one condition and it may not be favorable for another condition. Therefore, to solve these questions, we will have to look into the forces with the respective conditions of failure. The forces are identified to be the weight of the wall, the weight of the base, the active pressure due to the surcharge, and the active pressure due to the earth. The weight of the wall and the weight of the base and the active pressure due to the earth are related to the permanent variable. Therefore, they are considered as GK. As for the surcharge, it is a variable action. The weight of the wall and the weight of the base is actually favorable under the conditions of overturning and sliding analysis. However, it is going to be unfavorable for the settlement condition. The active pressure due to the surcharge and the earth are non-favorable to all the cases. Lastly, you are asked to sketch the arrangement of reinforcement bar and the weight hole. Double layer of reinforcement bar is to be provided on the wall and in the slab. To maximize the depth, the main reinforcement bar are placed closer to the surface of the concrete. The weight hole is to be provided closest to the bottom of the retaining wall. You will require a layer of rubbles to discharge the groundwater from the backfill soil. 